You're watching Pegarai TV, Rhode Island's public access channel. tuning in today and welcome to the second segment of Rhode Island Cybercrime Support Program. I'm here today with Rachel Ferdinandi from United Way 211 and my name is Kim Cassie Palangio from the Rhode Island Cybercrime Support Network. Um, at our previous segment we discussed uh, topics ranging from what 211 does, um, what cybercrime support does, our background, our history, and how we're here today. So I'd like to just quickly recap with you. The Cybercrime Support Network is a 501c3 nonprofit, and we are partnered with United Way 211 in Rhode Island to provide free service to Rhode Island residents for assistance with cybercrime um, before, during, and after a cybercrime event. Rachel, would you like to discuss um, 211? 211 is a free public service. Um, it's a nonprofit, um, or it's part of the United Way. Um, they provide a toll free number, just dial 211, and you can receive um, information and referral for any sort of social services you might need, which include housing, shelter, um, medical, mental health help. Um, if you need help get with Medicaid, Medicare, they can help you find a SHIP counselor. Um, if you need help finding food, they can help you find a food pantry or sign up for SNAP. Um, so really they can just help with any sort of social services you might need. And now with cybercrime and scams as well. Yes, this is a new program that we have at 211. We can help uh, with any sort of cyber crimes you may be experiencing, including ransomware, um, fraud on your bank account, hacking, um, imposter scams, any more that I can think of? <laughs> sure. Um, also, um, it's a free service. Yes. Um, free to all Rhode Island residents. Easy number to remember, dial 211. Mm -hmm. um, and when uh, a person calls in, they can call in 24 7 with phone, text, or chat capabilities. Yep, 24 7, 365. Great. And um, do you want to very quickly take people through the process of what would happen if they called in uh, with a cybercrime or scam issue? Um, with a cybercrime or scam, you would call into 211 um, and say that you have been a victim of a cybercrime and they would transfer you to a cybercrime specialist. Um, that person would help you complete an IC3, an Internet Crime Complaint Center report, which goes directly to the FBI. Um, they will pass your information along to the state police um, as long as you are willing. Um, and the state police might open an investigation. Hopefully they will open an investigation. Um, and then after that, uh, if you lost thousands of dollars or if you had your identity stolen, that cybercrime specialist will help you to recover and, and pay your rent or find the resources to pay your rent or find food that week. Um, they'll help you get your credit report so that you can make sure that there's nothing happening that you're unaware of um, in your name. They will help you to place a fraud alert or dispute any charges that may be on your credit report um, and any, any other resources that you may need they can help you find. That's great. That's great information. Um, and last time we also discussed uh, what a big problem cybercrime and scams are that um, we estimate um, that about 18 billion dollars in losses in, the, in America and over 2.3 million Americans affected. So it's, it's a really big issue. It happens to all of us um, at some point in time. We accidentally click on something, we order something online, 
Our identity was stolen when, when we were doing, um, for example, maybe refinancing our home, mm -hmm. and our identity was stolen in, in a breach. Um, if you're, um, you know, have a credit card company um, and they had a breach. So there's so many different ways mm -hmm. that, that things can happen to you. Um, and we discussed the various types of cyber crimes. Um, mm -hmm. There were 36 plus cyber crimes. And cyber crimes include scams also. Uh, a lot of people think of it as just, you know, e email hacking or ordering online or identity theft. Um, cyber crimes can also be scams. We talked about the grandparent scam, text scams to your phones, robocalls, and all of these topics. Mm -hmm. um, what was that number that you have? It's one in three people are a victim of a cybercrime? That's correct. So it's a lot more common than most a people realize. Common. Very prevalent. And um, so I'd like to talk today about one of the types of cybercrimes that's very prevalent right now, and that would be online shopping scams. So online shopping scams can happen any time of the year, but of course they're more prevalent around the holidays as we're all scrambling to um, buy presents for people and you're going on and you're clicking on stuff fast. Um, so I know for myself, at one point in time, I made the mistake of ordering from a company. I didn't recognize the name, um, but the website looked really good. Uh, the, the clothing looked really nice. And um, it wasn't a known company to me, but I didn't think anything about it. I went ahead and I, I placed my order. Um, thinking back now, I probably should have um, Googled that name, looked them up on, very quickly on the Better Business Bureau to check their ratings to make sure that they were a legitimate company because there were so many um, fake companies or fake websites or websites that the pictures look really good, but when you get the merchandise, they're not really selling those items. They're stealing those photos and then sending you something of lesser quality. So um, could you talk a little bit about online shopping scams and um, maybe some of the calls you're receiving, the different types of online shopping scams? Sure. Uh, so online shopping scams are obviously very prevalent. Um, a lot of people won't notice that they've accidentally clicked into a different website. They think they're still on Amazon.com or they think they're still on some sort of website that they do know, um, but accidentally they've clicked a link which has brought them to a different site which is unsecure. Um, so very often I've had people who've had their credit card information stolen. I've had people who simply didn't receive what they thought they purchased. Um, nothing came in the mail and they were unable to receive any um, customer support because this website was not legitimate. Or um, there's also sites like Let Go or Craigslist where you're going online and it's a person-to-person -person, um, transaction and you use a, an app to, to pay somebody before you meet them or you you see an ob you see this item and then you you talk to them and you send them a check or something and you think they're going to send it to you in the mail. Um, these things really do happen, and you need to be aware of it. Um, a lot of the times, what you're getting is not what you purchased, or you're not getting anything at all. Um, sometimes, what you'll purchase is like. Or, or you're trying to sell something online. People will scam you when you're trying to be the seller in these, these transactions, too. Um, I had one person who was attempting to sell something online, and she received a check in the mail for more than what she asked for, and that person asked her to send the refund. And that was actually kind of double scam because it was not only an online shopping scam, it was also check fraud. So they sent her a fraudulent check. Um, she, This person was very savvy. They didn't actually cash this check, but if they had, they could be on the hook for that fraudulent check. Um, so what I advise people to do when they're shopping online is be very, very wary. Um, always look for an HTTPS URL um, if, you, the, if the URL says HTTP and then there's a colon, um, it's not a secure site. That S that is missing stands for secure, and that means that the site you're on is encrypted. So never put your credit card information on an unsecure site. 
Um, always check the Better Business Bureau if you're on an, uh, a site you're unaware of, you were previously unaware of. Um, and if you think that you may have put, given your credit card information or your bank account information to a scammer, um, I suggest that you call your credit card um, service or you use your app, many credit cards have apps now, and you lock your card down immediately. Or you just cancel that card and get new numbers before somebody can, um, before somebody can steal your information and make a lot of purchases on it. Try to dispute that purchase if you can. Um, and if it's with your bank, bank account, you can, um, you can close that account immediately, just get new numbers. Um, I always recommend that people maintain strong passwords. Um, if, you're, if you're on an unsecure site, there, people could be checking what passwords you're using. They could be installing some sort of viruses on your computer that you're unaware of. Um, I mean, it's very dangerous clicking around on the internet, so you need so to be wary. To be careful. <clears throat> so what are some of the things, if someone calls in uh, with an online shopping scam, um, what, what is the process that you'll, you'll take them through to resolve or help them resolve the issue? Okay, so first I would tell them before anything to lock down their credit card because the first thing that they need to do is make sure they're not about to get scammed out of everything. So I would tell them to lock down their card first and then I would say we need to report this. Um, I would take them through the IC3 report and send their information over to the state police. Um, and then after that, if they were able to get their money back, great. If not, I would help them find resources to make sure they could pay their rent, get their food, anything along those lines. Um, and then I would tell them to get their credit report, get the full report just to make sure nobody's trying to take out a line of credit in their name, place a fraud alert on their name with TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. Um, through annualcreditreport.com because if you place that alert, they're going to notify you of any sort of line of credit um, in your name for the next year. Uh, if anybody tries to open a line of credit in their name, these bureaus will call you directly to make sure that you're opening a line of credit. And it makes it a little bit difficult if you are trying to do something like open a new credit card or buy a house or buy a car or anything that needs a credit report, um, but it's definitely worth it if you think your identity may have been stolen or if you think you've been scammed. And also, um, if you think you've been scammed, it's important to keep any documentation and Absolutely. put that in, in a file in a secure place in case um, you need to produce that to either um, uh, be made whole or an investigation takes place with the with police. Absolutely. Okay, that's um, good information. And also, um, we discussed this last time, if someone is um, uncomfortable with making that call to 211 or just wants to do some sort of self-serve option, they can visit fraudsupport.org, which will take them through those steps. They can click on um, the online shopping scam, um, and it will drill down those immediate action steps to take, uh, things to do to report with the hyperlink there to fill out that report um, on their own and also to reinforce so that they don't become victimized again. And are there any other um, online tips we, you'd like to pass on to anyone? Online safety tips? Um, there's, there's definitely many. Um, definitely if you're receiving emails with what looks like coupons or sales or any sort of special deals. If it looks too good to be true, it probably is. Uh, just be aware that if it's, if it's extremely cheap or if it's extremely awesome, do some research before you give anybody your information. Um, you can hover over a URL or an email if you are receiving an email like that. Um, and a lot of the times, something that looks like it's coming from Amazon.com will actually be coming from Amazon at gmail.com, and that's not Amazon.com. So, 
and then they'll link you to what looks like www.amazon.com, but if you hover over that link without clicking on it for a moment, um, you'll see what the actual URL is, and a lot of the time it's letters and numbers and gibberish. That's a very long URL, um, and it's going to take you to an unsecure site that you're looks maybe looks exactly like Amazon.com, but will not be that site that you're looking for. And look at that URL, like you said, for that HTTPS. Yep. As opposed to the HTTP. Yes. Um, and also, I know we talked about this before, but other safety tips um, when you're online, never wire money um, or send um, gift cards to strangers. No. Um, the uh, federal government is not going to call you and ask you to pay for something in gift cards. They're not going to ask you to wire money. Um, I know that 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 scam call happens a lot to people. You know, threatening calls that your electricity will be shut off, or you know, your social security card has been uh, number has been hacked. Um, the these police are on the way. The police are on the way. These are all um, these are all Lies. scams. If, if there's a question and you're not sure, call back, um, call that agency that they're claiming to be and, yes. and find out if they're really calling you. Yes, and find, the, find the real number. If it's, as, if it's Social Security, call the number on your Social Security card. If it's, or go online and find the actual Social Security number and before you, before you call. Don't call the number that is left for you on the message because that number goes right back to the scammer. And um, Cybercrime Support Network has a, um, a website, as we just discussed, to visit. And they can also follow us on YouTube and um, uh, sign up for our newsletter, receive that email to them. We um, send out scam alerts regularly, up-to-date scams um, and information to assist people. Rachel, before we close out, um, could you discuss a little bit about passwords, secure passwords, and how to better protect yourself? Absolutely. So it's very important to have a strong password, and it's also very important to use different passwords with different sites. Um, so if your password is one word, it's very hard to, it's very easy to guess, um, and that's how hackers figure out other people's passwords. They guess them. So if your password is I know in middle school, they always told us to use your mother's name and the number one. That is not a secure password. Your password should be um, a phrase, if possible. It should have some symbols and some numbers. Many sites require that you add a symbol or and a number. Um, so something like your mother's name and the number one is unsecure. But if you were to use an entire phrase, like Mary had a little lamb, um, and then you replaced the A in Mary with an at symbol and the L in little with the number one, it's a lot harder to guess than it would be if you were just putting your mother's name in the number one. Um, and if you were on an unsecure site and you didn't realize you were on an unsecure site and they asked you to create a password for this site so that you could insert your banking information or um, create an account to make it easier to purchase again, which many sites do, you're entering your password into that site. A lot of people use the same password for everything, or they use a variation of the same password for everything. They use their mother's name and the number one, or the num their mother's name and the number two, or something like that. And once they have that password, they can sort of just guess what what you might use commonly. Um, so if you're using the same passwords over and over and over again, it's a lot easier for them to go into your Gmail account and guess what your password might be and get into your Gmail account too, which is often connected to many other accounts. Um, so it's very, very important to use different passwords with different sites, and it's also very important to have strong passwords that are difficult to guess. Um, if it's, I recommend people just Every time you make a password, have a notebook full of passwords and that you keep beside your computer that is not on your computer. Don't, don't make a Word document on your computer because if your, per, your computer gets hacked, then you're going to see that Word document. Um, so if you have a notebook that's next to your computer, every time you make a password, just write the website, the username, the password, 
uh, and that way your passwords remain offline um, and differentiated. Although if that is a little bit difficult, um, there's also websites like LastPass, which make it a little bit easier not only to manage your passwords, but to um, generate strong passwords. So if you were to use this site, you would only need to remember your password into LastPass, but you could go into that site and store on an encrypted website all of your different passwords, um, and they can even help you generate strong passwords with a lot of different letters, numbers, capitalizations, symbols, um, and it just um, having different passwords for different sites keeps you so much more secure than you would even believe. Um, it's just, it's really good practice. And also being cognizant too of the fact that a lot of us have Facebook pages or we use social media and we put a lot of information out there. We put up pictures of our pets and our pets' names and some of our, maybe our favorite hobbies, some, um, maybe our nickname, maybe um, a nickname that we call our child. And I know at the last time we spoke about grandparent scams, we talked about using a password for you and your grandchild that only you would know. So when they call or text you, you would know that that was your granddaughter or your grandson because you have a secure word that you're passing. And not, not a word that would be your pet's name yeah. because our pet's names are prevalent Everywhere. in social media, you know, at our vet's office. It's just, it's a very common password and easy to hack. Yeah, so if you were gonna have a code word with family members, if um, that code word should stay offline completely, maybe in the notebook, but it should only be spoken verbally. Um, don't put that online. If it's, if it's what your grandkids call you, don't write your grandmother's name online. Um, it's, if it's online, hackers will find it. Scammers will find it. Um, it doesn't matter if you don't have your own Facebook page. Your family and friends very likely have a Facebook page, and that information can make it online. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Great information about online scams and passwords. And our next segment is going to cover tax scams. Um, the tax season is coming upon us very soon. These are prevalent. There are a number of prevalent tax scams out there that we'd like to cover. So thanks, Rachel. Thanks, Kim.